So JB, let's have an update here. First job is to mock things up to make sure that the new parts interface properly with the existing parts. And of course we, in the case of the cross member that holds it, pick, it supports the transmission that had to be taken out and then we uh, cut it off, make a, a mount going in both directions toward both sides of the car. And uh, as you can see, the original transmission, which sat quite a bit farther forward, only, only had to deal with this little uh, shaft coming out of it. We have a completely different configuration well, the here. The size of the transmission obviously is right. much different. Exactly. It's different, completely different shape. So all of that support system had to be removed and a new support system created to carry the new um, transmission we got a new tra transmission we got a transition between the back of the block on the v12 that is the v12 block okay so fortunately because of, of the ford v8 guys uh, putting a lot of these c4s behind flathead v8s yeah that it just works out that that same bolt pattern is the same on the back of the v12 so that allowed us to use this transition piece and be able to a bolt up a really small very high quality Ford C4 uh, transmission in the behind the engine and still get it in the space and, and then the shifter linkage will sit about right here so this this was up inside so you have to kind of that's why all this convoluted thing. now let's uh, let's back up for just a second because uh, we're talking about two transmissions here right. let, let me let me back up to a second where the customer had made a decision right where they this transmission closer to you is the original three speed exactly. manual transmission exactly with its whirly gig shifter yes. thing that we've enjoyed looking at before yes that comes out of the waterfall console whatever you call right. it right exactly and so the customers decided they want to have the uh, the drivability of an automatic transmission exactly. the ease of driving yeah well and it also opens it up to other drivers Right. Yeah. Uh, a lot so, of the, as we talked about before, a lot of people today do not use stick shifts. So, especially for instance, in my family, I have two members, my wife and my son, who aren't necessarily um, conversant in uh, three-speed shifting. But they they can both do it, but they, you know they're they're used to automatic cars. Right. And uh, it just makes them more useful. Uh, you can kind of relax and not have to be. Cons concerning yourself with gears and shifters and clutches and that sort of thing. Okay, so now the C4, Yes. not everyone may know what that means. Some people think that's the fourth generation of a Corvette. So <laughs> let's talk about a well, C4. Too. What are the uh, benefits of a C4 in particular? Well, in the, in the mid 60s, there were uh, a new class of cars was coming out that were uh, much higher performance. So the transmissions had to be able to deal with more horsepower, more torque, uh, okay. a different kind of thing so Ford uh, wisely said all right we need to come up with a transmission that's simple and relatively bulletproof so we can put it behind thing uh, Cobras even had them as an option um, uh, GT 350s cars with three or four hundred horsepower so okay. it had to be small it had to be very well made and it had to shift properly and C4 is, is uh, a great transmission for that that purpose when I realized that what I'm looking at here, it looks giant, but really it's it's a torque converter, an adapter plate, right. and the actual transmission is quite compact. Exactly, it's all it, it's only from here to here, so you've got all of that packed into this little package. Yeah, and it turns out that that uh, actually some of the race cars ended up using these because they are so durable, and, okay. and we're, we're always looking for durability. All right, now just for a second, I'm going to peek over the uh, plastic here and show. That there is a V12 block right. that's mounted in place in right. front of this car. Now, obviously, this is, or I shouldn't say obviously, but I, I should should at least say this is not the engine that's ultimately going in the car. No, absolutely not. This is just a motor that we use for mock-up purposes. We're looking to make sure that the mount uh, locations are correct because a lot of people modify the mounts and put different engines in them, and, and then they cut all the original stuff out, and they weld in you know, gob job uh, stuff. So we have to remove all that and in order to, we don't want to put the painted engine in here and have it exposed to this kind of uh, cruelty. So we're gonna use this mock-up block in, in with the transmission bolted to it so right. that if we have to do some modifying uh, 
it, we can do that, and, uh, and it's it's dimensionally accurate, just like the the engine's going to wind right. up being in here. Yeah, the one that's being built is yes. going to fit exactly the same way. Exactly. You can. Okay, so going back to these transmissions, well, actually, we can talk about this this subject even looking at this engine. Right. We talked about a customer making a decision to modify the drivetrain. And on these older cars, I guess it can be a little bit uh, controversial because people have different thoughts on modification. Do I try to be original? Yes. Do I try to have the original part numbers on everything? Uh, yeah. Do I try to improve the performance, which means modifying it? How right. far do I go? What are your thoughts or what have you learned from customers? Because I'm sure there's different points of view. Well, we don't try to give a, a customer a point of view. We try to explain the two points of view that, and let them choose. And yeah. um, there are obviously two schools of thought. One is make everything original to the point of distraction. Uh, that was a valid uh, method in my mind uh, maybe 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, since we are now working on a much more limited supply of materials, and the engines have been around a long time. A lot of them are worn out and, and not particularly useful. Um, we really got to rethink the original equation because, um, again, Zephyrs um, have, have, have a, an interesting background over the last 30 or 40 years. They, they, are, they are built and maintained and driven by people who actually drive them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, let me explain how that differs. Some cars, you know, you, the Packards, the some of the other cars really don't get driven. Let's be perfectly honest. They're beautiful, they're like works of art, but they really don't have any functionality in, in a society where everybody's going 75 miles an hour and uh, they want to get there and you have to be able to stop fast. Th those cars just aren't practical. These cars, a, a long time ago, people figured out that they were actually usable because of the, the, the way they were built. Um, they have a, a reasonable amount of horsepower. They're, they're easy to operate. They actually stop starting in 38 and forward. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a different kind of a, a, a feeling about these particular automobiles. Um, and the, the emphasis is on drivability. So if you're, if you're going to drive them, then you're going to use that as your guiding light. And you're not going to say, well, I want original part numbers on my heads or something, even though they're crappy heads. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. You're not going to sit in a museum or you know, in a living room with a disco ball and spin it. it it's going to actually have to go out on the street, function, and bring you home. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is another little problem that some of these people that don't spend any time actually driving them and operating them. Uh, you know, I, dro I drove a 38 today and it has an original motor. So you've got to live with those things for a little bit of a time to understand that there are things that you can and there are things you cannot do. And Sure. It all starts at the, in the, at the point at which you start building the engines for them and, and, the, and putting the transmissions in them. So okay. it's, uh, and value-wise, another, another thing that creeps into the equation, obviously, uh, there are cars that, for instance, if you were to modify a Packard V12 convertible coupe and put another, another engine in it, of course, you'd be doing it uh, a disfavor. When you do that with a Zephyr, as long as it's an original V12 and you keep the, the basic systems that it was born with and, and, and don't start chopping the car and doing all these strange things that people do to them, um, then it, it will maintain its value. And in point of fact, the cars that are modified tastefully, uh, if, you, if you're just worried about money, uh, often pull considerably more uh, in, in the way of value at auctions or sales than a, a strictly original car does. Yeah, okay. So part of it is just really a preference thing, but uh, clearly if, if there are some parts that aren't even available at all, like right. you've been doing this for many, many years, so right. you know your supply line, you know where to find things. Yeah. And if certain parts just don't exist, you're, you're at the point where you're fabricating something to make yeah. it work. We're fabricating a lot of parts. Um, and uh, we talked about the water diverters that go up inside the engine. Those are not available anymore. They've all rotted or been pulled out and not used again. Right. So we're going to recreate those uh, probably out of stainless, so that they don't they have, they live longer. They go up inside the engine right about this point here, and they send the water to the back of the engine, so it cools the engine more, more completely. If if the water just sits there and circulates in these first cylinders right here, it's not going to do nearly as good a job as if if the diverter sends the water to the back and then and then back again. Right. So they have a serious functional, very important function, especially in a hot climate. Right. 
So, right. and just uh, to remind people who may not have saw, seen the earlier video, those, those two holes represent there are two water pumps. That's correct. These, uh, vehicles. There's, and there's a water diverter up inside here and a water diverter up inside here. Yeah, and to get an even distribution of cooling, right. you, you got to send water. We got to send the water to the back of the block. Yeah. In order for okay. them to do a, a proper job of circulating and, and drawing the heat vis a vis the water. And we'll get, there's another whole discussion about water, but originality is only in my mind valid if it plays an important role in the operation of the car. Right. If, if you're just doing it because you want to brag about having all the part numbers, that's your, that's your prerogative. And, sure. and uh, we'll happily build you a car like that, but it's going to take a lot longer uh, yeah. because the originality, uh, and, and some of these things are in dispute. Um, for instance, uh, if, if let's say, for instance, you're at, uh, at Lincoln and, and you have, you just finished the year 1938 model year, and mm -hmm. you have a 2038, 1938 uh, coded, right on the heads, 38 motors, right. and here comes the 39s that are just new and they're gonna come in, or what are you gonna do? You have two choices. You can put those 38 motors in the 39s because nobody really cares or knows, or you can throw them all away and say, by God, we're gonna stick with part numbers only. Well, that's ridiculous. Of course, that didn't happen. Yeah, so, so you're all, saying that at the time they were built, the factory wasn't that meticulous about all the part numbers matching. No, it didn't year. mean anything. It still doesn't mean anything. Right. If a 38 and 39 have identically the same motor, even to the extent that some of the casting numbers, uh, for instance, I've seen on original 39s are from 38. Yeah. That's because they got a 38 motor and a 39, and that's the way the factory built it. Right. So the argument that everything has to agree in terms of part numbers and that sort of thing is is, is ridiculous. It, okay. It's not the way it worked. Yep, I got gotcha. you. And so we so, can't re we can't recreate reality uh, all these years later. Uh, and I, I had a discussion with with a customer, and uh, he gets it. And uh, most of the people in Lincoln Zephyrs uh, are are really aware of that, and they don't obsess over part numbers. Right. So now backing up a step to this as a project, the engine is underway being built yes we've talked about that right ed smith and uh you're just getting other parts and pieces together i suppose as far as a project update yeah when we run into a a, a, a situation like the motor which is a long-winded deal we got to go elsewhere yeah so that's why we're trying to get the uh, the rear end the front end and all of that accomplished and we got a, almost all the parts now to do that and so we'll start mocking up certain amount of it has to be welded and fabricated after th everything is in place. But we got a lot of the stuff here and we've already fitted some of it and uh, we got it in, in this particular locale until it has its front end and its rear end. The spring okay. is, is ready, so it's coming back. Mm -hmm. And uh, the front spring and then the back spring, we're gonna take some leafs out of it to set the car down just a bit. Yep. And um, so it's, it's really moving along uh, really well, but we have to advance on a number of fronts to make headway. Yep, and sometimes Things all happen yes, quickly. Yes, I just spoke to the plater on the grill for this car. Oh yeah. Uh, who we, we used years ago and went back to him and a delightful guy, does beautiful work, mm -hmm. uh, but he wasn't local and I try, to, I try to deal with local vendors if I can. Well, my other local guy is out like three months. Yeah. Four months, I mean, who knows? Could be a year, you know? Right. And uh, his prices reflect that. So, you know, we, we're gonna have to go elsewhere. That's why you need a multiplicity of sources because, um, you can't just, you know, take the same girl to the dance every every time. You'll end up and she won't be there. She'll, you know, she moved to St. Louis. Now what are you going to do? <laughs> right. So you really have to keep your options open, and and yeah. that means that you got to be good to everybody that you deal with, and that you got to require that they treat you well as well. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good update. Yep. Thanks so much. Yeah, we're really we're really excited about getting this far. Yeah, it's getting close. I can yep. see that.